Nico, uh, just let Winnie know if uh, you can hear me. Thank you very much. Hello everybody, testing, testing.
Take logo ball. Yeah, what a warm welcome. Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the Insurance Apprentice Season 10 Finale. I'm Nico Panaggio, and it's an honor to once again be your host on this highly anticipated evening. And for those of you who don't know, the Insurance Apprentice is a competition running in the short-term insurance industry, showcasing young professionals competing for the ultimate title of the Insurance Apprentice. Now, the competition, now in its 10th year, is broadcast on social media, media channels once a week over a seven-week period. TIA is more than just a game changer. It's a life changer for those who take part. And at the very least, an intriguing perception changer for those who get to watch it. Celebrating 10 years is a huge milestone. And to make things even more special, we've invited the top three contestants of each year of TIA's existence to join us tonight for this momentous occasion. So a warm welcome to those VIP guests for the night. Lovely to have you here. And then of course, a very, 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 very warm welcome to our 2024 contestants, to our sponsors, without which we can't do this, our wonderful guests, and of course, all our online viewers back home. I hope you dressed up back home as well, like everyone did looking lovely tonight. And then a huge big thank you to Hollard and Global Choices for hosting us tonight and for sponsoring this finale of the Insurance Apprentice Season 10. As always, the setup is amazing and it's an honor to be here at the villa. Now, for those of you who like to post on social media, you can. I'm not going to tell you to put your phones up. In fact, I'm going to say put them on take photos and post and take photos and hashtag. Please use the hashtag TIA2024. If you've been what? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Go again. Wow. You guys are on fire. Now, speaking of on fire, if you've been watching the socials, you'll know that TIA has been trending in the top 10 on X this season. Yeah. So very, very well done to all our contestants for stepping it up, but also to our social media team for running a stellar campaign. And speaking of contestants, I think it's time that we brought them in. Should we? Should we? All right, let's do that. Shivani Kesav. Jason Meisen. Nicoline Klaassen. And Lieb van Kiesi. Tristan Merritt. Celeste Ryan. Keba. Keba Fancy Mohoshi. Mandelake Maricane. Reinhard Schnauter. Schnettler, Schnettler, Reinhardt. Temwa Nirenda. There you have it, our top 10 finalists for season 10. Give them another round, please, ladies and gents. Well done, everybody. Welcome. No, no, more excitement, more excitement. Welcome. Yeah, there we go. All right, so, okay, we don't blame them. They're a little bit nervous because uh, they've been through a lot. They essentially beat 150 other entrants to secure their place, and it's incredible. It's an incredible achievement to make it to here, and, of course, testament to their potential in the insurance industry. But, but let's be honest, and let's think about this for a second, all right, because essentially you're showcasing both your strengths and your weaknesses <laughs> for everyone in the industry to see, people across the ponds to watch, and, and, and that has to be, you know, 
put down to either you're very brave or you're absolutely insane, right? <laughs> it's a huge risk. But since they're in the risk business, I guess the only ones who can answer the question of whether or not it's worth it are you fine people. Yeah? Yeah. So while you ponder on that, let's take a look at this year's season highlights. After a nationwide search across the country, the journey to crown the Insurance Apprentice Season 10 began with over 150 aspiring contestants who all shared the burning dream of becoming the ultimate ambassador of the insurance industry. I have what it takes to win the Insurance Apprentice. I want to be the best. It's now, it's today, or it's never. I'm here to win. Your time starts now. Working with my group members, it was significant friction. It's stressful. It was know. my idea. I just have a tiny little problem with Tristan. Who was the most destructive? Shivani and Jason. We're going to fail at this task. You spend a lot of time arguing about nothing. I actually don't know what you are addressing. I wouldn't invest a single cent in your business. Following a series of intense eliminations, our judges face the trying task of selecting the cream of the crop, our top 10. Congratulations to make it to the top 10. <laughs> top 10, baby! Woo! Top 10! Top 10, baby! Yeah! Week after week, these hopeful apprentices were confronted with the grueling challenges that put their resilience, teamwork, and expertise to the test. The tasks are going to be tougher than they've ever been before. You are the hunter. Don't be hunted in this competition. You have to bring your best every single day. I need you to treat this like your only opportunity to show us why you're here. No one is the insurance apprentice yet. There's absolutely no leniency. There can only be one winner and while some contestants got along like a house on fire, others clashed like fire and ice. We have different personalities. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Temo and Shivani could have put their egos aside. We've actually, someone's getting eliminated from our group. I've led the team to failure. Mandy just does not listen. Everyone wants to be heard or thinks their idea is the best. I'm walking around with a big X on my back. We are not getting it right. I'm going to tip know. you on that. We are done. She may have shot herself in the foot. I do not know anymore. I'm in a panic. I'm shaking. You want to get rid of a snake? Cut off the head. With the goal of outshining their rivals and summiting to success, the contestants endured unimaginable time pressure and a series of daunting presentations, all to win over the judges, which didn't exactly go as planned. There were a lot of things that went wrong in this group. Ha, guys, what was that? I'm not getting a good sense of your understanding of what is required. If I can ask you just for a moment to close your eyes. I kind of woke up and regretted that it wasn't a dream. I felt like I was yanked out of my sabbatical to sit through a class of business training. You're sounding like a politician right now. You start your presentation with an insult. It was unprofessional. I just think there was a complete lack of depth. You've taken me to Cape Town via Botswana. You guys are insurers. Come on. Siobhan, I feel like we're having the same conversation over and over. Okay, maybe I'll get to the point. Quicker, please. <laughs> Never ever do that again. Anyone else can take it. Um, Not Jason. Tim? Okay. I was a little disappointed. I'm very disappointed. Simon, before you pull out, I'm out. Under the spotlight and amidst their daunting interrogations, some shining stars emerged and ensured their path to victory. So amazing to see how you performed today. For the first time, I felt something. You were the best today. I was very impressed. You can pat yourselves on the back for that. Congratulations to the contestants for making it this far. And just as the contestants were gaining momentum, they encountered a few stumbling blocks. I'm gonna cut to the chase. You need to choose one person who's going to go and sing for your supper. When the judges walked in, I was so shocked. There's a second person that's going to be leaving us today. Anyone is up for the slaughter. We're going to have to get you to decide who leaves the show today. I could literally be on the chopping block. Write down the name of the person that should leave the competition. Throughout the season, we've witnessed tough decisions. There is no clear winner. Victorious celebrations and ruthless eliminations. Someone is going home today. I voted for Tristan. Tristan. 
This is the end of the road for you. I'm devastated that I've just been eliminated. I honestly don't think I deserve to go home. I don't think I deserve to go home today, but I do believe I've served my purpose. I'm happy with the way I played the game. The numbers dwindled as contestants were sent packing week after week until we were down to three. You are our top three. You guys should really pat yourselves in the back. One, two, three. three. Top three! Who will be crowned the Insurance Apprentice Season 10? You guys did so well. They did so well. Come on now. What a great season it's been. Perhaps the feistiest group of contestants we've had thus far. And speaking of feisty, Nicolene, I'm going to start with you. Oh, shit. <laughs> now, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do. I'm not going to ask you what you think I'm going to ask you either. I'm going to ask you to do that happy thing. What was that happy face? Can you do that again? I don't know what it is. That was amazing. <laughs> that's that's, that's got to be a meme at some point. Listen, one of you said it. I think it might have been Mandy who said that it takes, it takes a lot of a series of moments to last in the show. It takes one moment to get you sent home. How tough is it to bear the burden of that pressure? Um, I think it's tougher than people think. Um, I think nobody enters or does something not to succeed. And I think when you're at that moment and you've pictured yourself to be in the top and it doesn't play out the way you hoped, then I think um, it's a disappointing moment. Um, yeah. And one doesn't have any control of where it goes. You, you don't know what to expect. I mean, you come there and you have an idea. And when it happens, you're like, man, I can't believe that just happened to me, right? It's quite perplexing at times. But you handled it very well. And let's just, let's just be fair, all right, Simon, wherever you are. Visualization is a legit technique. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if you know how to use it, but I have a theory on this. I have a theory on this. I think what happened is that Simon wanted that for himself, you see, because on the very next episode, he opened with getting people to visualize, asking him to imagine himself as a strong career-driven woman. But apart from that, <laughs> apart from that, I think it really worked very well. Um, what do you take away from this? Um, so yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing was to not let a single person or an event define you. Um, and this was definitely a technique that I used of something I've learned in the industry. I just um, gradually uh, motivated us and, and do so every day to help us grow and be better, better versions of ourselves. Um, and I think for me to take away from everything is just that do things better next time, learn from it, um, and yeah, let it not define you. Yeah, we can all learn from uh, what we've done. And, and looking back with a critical eye, but with the idea to grow, that's the best way to look at it, right? You've done well. You've done very well. You heard everyone shouted for you who walked in, right? Well done. You can do that again. Well done. <laughs> Celeste. Over to you. So let's talk about something else that's also a skill, also very difficult to mask, and it's called, to master, it's called uh, quiet power, okay? No, no, this is a thing, people. Quiet power is a thing. You've got to know how to pitch it, when to use it, when to pull back. Mm -hmm. You may have been a little bit too quiet, but when you look back, how did you, how did you experience it? Because sometimes it's hard for an introvert to be, a, you know, with a bunch of not that. <laughs> Loud and outspoken people, yeah, no. It's interesting, but it's a learning curve. If you want to challenge yourself, you take yourself out of your comfort zone, and then you just move forward. Indeed you do. And I mean, even Knox said, listen, she might be quiet, but she has a lot of knowledge. Very true. So essentially it comes down to taking what you have and then just pushing as hard as you can when given the opportunity, right? Correct. Yeah, I think you did well. Uh, any advice that you would give to any other contestants coming into this competition who might also be on the less extroverted side, but who want to get out there and, and just put themselves out there into that uncomfortable position? Yeah, you lose 100% of the opportunities not taken. So I would say go for it. Very well said. Very well said. Now, it's a good time to remind 
everyone of the great things about taking part in this competition is that you win. You win all the way, regardless of when you are dismissed. And two of these prizes worth mentioning includes a prize for the most entrepreneurial mind, sponsored by AMI. And this prize was won by... Temwa! <laughs> In the Ami task, Temwa wins 5,000 Rand cash from Ami, and congratulations, well done, very well deserved, yeah? Global Choices, before we move on, a big thank you to Global Choices, one of tonight's headline sponsors. Let's take a look. We're adding to life by focusing on what matters most. At Global Choices, we prioritize partnerships that enhance everyday life for your policyholders. With our 24-hour emergency and innovative digital solutions, we ensure that your clients and their policyholders receive prompt and efficient assistance during emergency risk events. As an extension of your business, we provide the right team, suppliers, and digital solutions to effectively manage any incidents and take care of your customers. We understand that customers are not just looking for traditional insurance. They are actively seeking innovative products that not only protect them from financial disruptions, but also cater to their revolving needs. As insurers and brokers, we assist you in prioritizing customer experience when developing these new offerings. Our focus is always on putting your customers first at every step of the process. Global Choices, adding to life. The most innovative contestant prize sponsored by Global Choices was won by... Keba! Keba Fence! Keba wins 10,000 Rand in cash. Congratulations, Keba. Very nicely done. Now, while we have you in the spotlight, Keba, it's a good time to mention that you captivated the audience this year in a, in a different way, a way that hasn't necessarily been done before. Let's take a look. Top 10, baby. Yeah. Go in like a dark horse. You are the hunter. You want to get rid of a snake? Cut off the head. You have to give the samurai their sword. Wolf, sheepskin. That's it. If it means I have to break a pen, I have to break a pen. I'm in there with trust issues. Don't be hunted in this competition. Yeah, here we go. My performance today. Oh, I'm walking around like this duck with a big X on my back. I have to blend in and I have to know when to go for the kill. I could literally be on the chopping block. My insides are on a roller coaster ride. If this was a relationship or a marriage, I would have walked away. That's like taking a dagger. You know, it feels like I've died and now I have to account for my sins. Worst performance ever. Means me. That's what I am right now. Caught whiff of things like allies and all. No one's talking to me. Hoo-wee. I'm really gonna miss Tyrion Lannister. The mother of dragons said to me, you'll find that you're disappointed with the answer that you just gave. Ah, mother of dragons. This is me signing out. You can't give me the death there again. <laughs> The burning question, the burning question is, do you have a whole book of these things? <laughs> do you have copyright on them? Because they're definitely kind of a mix of things that we've heard before, but you got your own spin on it. I think you can tell who had tea with 60-year-olds when he was only five. Uh, <laughs> That's nice, <laughs> nice answer. Well, every season we have a king or queen of the one-liners, and this scene indubitably is your win. Thank you very much. Yes, round of applause. Some of them make a lot of sense, you know? Like, you know, the, 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 if you want to kill the snake out of the head, but the samurai and the sword? What? <laughs> Do you want to explain? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, um, I mentioned something about talent, right? When you have talent, harness it. Don't let it threaten you. So I knew that he was working on numbers. So instead of me trying to be all smart, go in there and shine, I had to let him shine at what he was strong with, and it gave us the win. That's how you lead. Yeah, and it was an art of war tactic, wasn't it, that you employed? I, I saw a lot of that in your gameplay throughout the season. Just mm -hmm. thinking in, in terms of, you know, those, those singular thoughts, those singular actions, 
and then executing them as you go. Yeah. And then making a few up as you go as well. Yeah. <laughs> which will live forever in perpetuity. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, you, had, you seem to have a lot of fun throughout this season. But of course, you went through a lot of tough times as well. What was, what was your lowest point? Uh, my lowest point was the, the FSCA task. Uh, I'm quite passionate about TCF. And I think what happened is I overthought it. And it felt like that moment when you've truly failed a customer, which are people that actually drive this industry and people that we need to do right by. Uh, so outside of whether I was eliminated or not, I feel I didn't deliver that well. Yeah, I think that's what makes it so hard is because you've got so much pressure on you. You've got so little time to prep. You've got all these people looking at you. You know you're going to be judged so critically. It's a not, a, it's not a, a natural situation you find yourselves in. And still you have to, you have to lay it out there. And, and then afterwards you, you're very hard on yourselves. Is it, is, it, is it hard to forgive yourself for messing up? It's not easy. What I did was the very next Tuesday uh, my wife had delivered, right? And this FSA task kept on playing in my head. So after I got home, I was about to sleep, I was like, no, I'm going to work on that task again. Worked on it, did the delivery, dropped the mic, and said, that's how you deliver it. Then I went to bed. So you're saying it was like giving birth? It was like Because we will never know, you know. <laughs> you, you seem to have a lot of fun. One of my, one of my favorites was, uh, was, here we go. Can you do that for us? Please, just do it for us. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, we go. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. All right, so, so some contestants really got along well, and, and others had, you know, a bit of a bone to pick with one another. Some contestants just rubbed everyone up the wrong way. Let's take a look. My name is Shivani Keshav. I work at Kairos Risk and Insurance Services. I'm in Claims and Internal Compliance. Shivani, you uh, were a top 10 last year, if I'm not mistaken. I think I need to be a bit less diplomatic. I feel last year I was a bit subtle and, you know, trying to be the good guy. How do you sell that? That's the app is diverting the water. Because we're not on the same page. I feel like Shivani, she needs to just rein it back a little bit because it's been a little bit tricky to get our word across. We're going to fail at this task. We've got no presentation. We've got no content. There's no direction. What would you describe your team dynamic as? Power struggle. Between? Shivani and Jason. Shivani's got a lot to say. We're not given enough time to step into that role and actually allow her to listen to us. I honestly don't see myself working with the same group members again. It wasn't a good match. Making it through to the top 10 for the second time, it's, it's some sort of achievement that I can't explain. Do you think we can touch on all or do you think we should select a few? I do think Shivani did speak a lot over people. Mandy and I have very strong opinions. He is giving secondary leader vibes, which is good, as long as he stays in his lane. Diversity can bring its own strengths to the table. She's trying not to lose. Now you end up speaking over everyone, but then you're compromising the rest of the team. So I just want to say I'm very happy that we're all on the same page kind of thing. We need to know that there is transfer of skills. Shivan, I feel like we're having the same conversation over and over. Okay, maybe I'll get to the point. Quicker, As please. <laughs> that would be amazing. Shivani ultimately skated through. She nominated herself as the leader for the group but then didn't really do much leading within the group. Would you the rather have is, one person doing is, everything or different is, houses? So the difference is... Tim Watt takes very long to make a point. He's just not grasping the concept and I don't know, I'm, I'm frustrated. You are out of time. So you're going to be super embarrassed if you carry on down this road. We are not getting it right. I'm going to tip you on that. We are done. We'll be, actually, someone's getting eliminated from our group because we haven't done anything. I'm telling you now. I will vividly state, if I'm asked, that I did not support the direction we're taking. And who's that going to be? Probably me, because I took the leader and I'm leaving you nowhere, know but anyways. Okay. I'm probably going to go home today because despite my efforts, I've led the team to failure. We, we've created this, let's run with it, let's sell it like it, our lives depend on it. You start your presentation with an insult. So I, I am out. I'm also out. Sometimes people need to put their egos and their personal needs aside for the greater good of collaboration. Will you please reveal who you voted for? It's one vote for Shivani. Temwa. Shivani. 
Shivani, please reveal who you voted for. You voted for yourself. As a leader, you are responsible for your team. If they win, you win. If you lose, you've lost. You're dismissed. I wrote my own name down because in a leadership role, you are responsible for that team. And I don't think it's fitting of a leader to throw anyone under the bus. I think I can eventually sleep at night knowing I've seen it to fruition to the best of my ability. And yeah, I think now I'm, I'm at peace with knowing where I, where I fear. Speaking of samurais, <laughs> I mean that's uh, let's 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 give credit where it's due. That's uh, an honourable, uh, you know, a way to go, isn't it? Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. So look, some people come into this competition and they come in easy, slow on the low, all right, and then they suss things out and they check people out and then they slowly grow and intensify and you know as they get to the end, it's like you know, full tilt ahead. Shivani came in guns blazing. Am I right? Yes. Is that how you usually operate? Is that is that how you how you work? Um, I think it just boils down to the fact that um, I have an attitude problem. You know, she keeps throwing herself under the bus, doesn't she? But I guess, I guess that's testament to your character as well, because you have this ability to read the room, to understand a situation, to know when you've overstepped, and then to pull back and to go, okay, how do I turn this to my advantage? And I think that's what you did. You took your adversity, you turned it to advantage, and now you'll always be fondly remembered and honorably remembered as the person who fell on her own sword, so to speak. Keba? <laughs> fell on her own sword? Have you got... <laughs> you can use it, it's not mine. I will. Okay. So, wh what did it feel like for you throughout the season? Did you feel like you were battling and you were fighting, or did you feel like you were actually, you know, you were, you were making headway, you were progressing? Um, I think every episode faced uh, each of us with its own challenges, um, and every group you're in, it's new people. Uh, but the one comfort I did have, oddly enough, was Keba was with me for in every group. So in that sense, it felt like you had a bit of a friend, an ally, and someone familiar. And I think I, I can speak for all of us where our greatest challenge is you're working with people you haven't worked before, and you're expected to tackle this magnanimous task, which is difficult because you don't know people's strengths and weaknesses. So yeah, it's, it's been challenging all the way. It's, it's been a bit of a fight, but you know, honestly, in the background of it all, this is a great bunch, and we knew that no matter what happened in the actual task and competition, at the end of it, you know, it was all for the competition, and we remained friends despite it. Yeah, look at that. What happens in the show stays in the show, yeah. right? <laughs> Except the friendships and the love, of which there was lots. Um, you know, you know, one big question, do you think they were intimidated by you at all, the others? Um, I don't know for what reason uh, specifically you mean, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what, dynamite comes in small packages and you are dynamite, so well done. Thank you. Yeah, round of applause, why not, thank you. Yeah, Jason, so you were the other side of the volatile duo as the two of you became, uh, came to be known. What is your perspective on this? What do you mean volatile? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, after that first task where we had a, a few issues, uh, Shivani and I had a little chat, and um, we became friends afterwards. And the rest of the show is history. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what, what often happens is great minds think alike, and also there's a lot of conflict between them, right? Mm. Would you make great partners no. moving forward? Not, not romantic <laughs> partners. No. <laughs> We're thinking in business terms here. This is not, this is uh, not okay. no. Love Island. <laughs> okay. no, so, no, so working with Shivani was um, challenging. But I think after our chat, we realized how to work together. And I think that's the process of what we all went through. You know, you kind of learn how to work with everybody's personalities and different characteristics. Yeah. And that's kind of how it went, you know. So we learn from it and we move on. You do. You do sometimes learn from it and move on. And sometimes you just don't want to. And you fight with your own teammates in front of the judges. Oh. You want to talk us through that moment? Is that, you just couldn't help yourself, right? You were like, no, I have a point. Yeah, so I disagreed with them because I think it's just my environment as a broker. You know, I want to disclose everything to my clients. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> mm. 
But it's true. It's true. No, I think I disagreed. And um, <laughs> in that episode, Simon gave me a second opportunity. I saw him say, like, are you sure? <laughs> and um, I took that as like a hint that I should change my mind. And I realized I've got a backbone, you know, so I must... <laughs> So I've got to stick with my decision, and I knew I was going home from that moment, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in future, for any contestants, if, you, if Simon says to you, are you sure, just stick with what you're yeah, saying. stick with Simon. Stick with Simon, Simon. you'll stick go with far. Simon. All right, so you did go home uh, after that. Do you think it was, it was eliminating someone who was weak, or just kicking man while he's down, while you have the opportunity? The second option. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Why am I not surprised? All right. This season, Gibbs put up a fantastic prize of 20,000 rands worth of a Gibbs bursary to use for any course of your choice at Gibbs. And the winner of this prize is you, Jason. You can cry again. You can cry again. The Delta company felt that your answer on their question about the future of the industry was brilliant, so very well done. Now, something else I have to mention, uh, one of the important things people have to know before they enter this competition is that you, you can't take things too personally, all right? You have to take it in the spirit of the competition, but at the same time, you must learn from it. But that is, of course, not, not always easy, is it, uh, Anifa and Tristan? I assume you know what's coming. <laughs> I am Anifa Mkize. I work at Ambledown Financial Services as a marketing and communication manager. I'm Tristan Moreau, and I'm an associate at Norton Rose Fulbright. What makes me different from the rest of the competitors is the fact that I'm actually in marketing. I think I have what it takes to win the insurance apprentice because I have a very broad range of interests. We mustn't so we'll try and tie... That technology at yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. where are we emphasizing the technology? Anifa made us go back and forth, and myself and Temwe had to spend a lot of time trying to convince them of what was very clear in the brief. Wait, can I interject before yeah. I, I want to speak after Temwe? I do feel that Anifa has again allowed herself to slip through in this task. They're not listening to the ideas at all. Because it's coming from me, it's a no. What's the great innovation here? I think Anifa and Mandy skated a bit. I contributed fully. The idea that we worked on was mine. Tell me something about pet insurance, guys. Is there a service of any kind as a VAP that we could offer in terms of that like direction? Was yeah. your solution not just creating a new brokerage? I feel like Jason and I are running around saying, okay, how about this and how about this? Which was completely ignored. I'm silenced. I don't think this is new. I think I'd have to say that I'm out. My concern would be Anifa would be prejudiced for not speaking as much in the presentation. Where he fell short today was in terms of communicating the execution. I'm going to need you to write the name of the person that you think should be leaving the show today. <sighs> Tristan, I think we'll start with you. Who did you vote for? Anifa. This is the second episode in which Anifa has taken the less substantial portion of the task by choice. Anifa, who did you vote for? I voted for Tristan. He was dismissive to us putting our points together. And I'm quite surprised that he's voting for me considering it was my idea. Tristan, you're the next person to leave the competition. You're dismissed. I'm devastated that I've just been eliminated. I don't think that I deserved to go home today. I really thought I had what it takes to get to the finale. I presented what I wanted to present. Ask him, I was writing notes, I was organizing, I was compiling the presentation, then you want to tell me what I didn't bring my A game. I stand by my vote that Anifa, I think, should have been the one to go home today. I had two days of having to work with Tristan and be dismissed for everything that I say. What is going through your head? Nah, I was not happy with the treatment, you know. I mean, last week already we had a comment from one of the judges about how you speak to people, you know. I was deeply offended that Tristan tried to vote me off. I thought that was like 
appalling. So I'm just like, yeah, disrespect me once. Yeah. Disrespect me twice. Nah, I'm not going to take that. Well, I mean, I have to say, the two of you said more with your faces than you did with your words throughout. <laughs> and if I've never seen someone dismiss someone with their eyes, <laughs> can you do it right now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, wait, Tristan, can you do it back? <laughs> Don't worry, you had other great ones, so. So... For a marketing professional in a, an insurance competition, you didn't do too badly. Did you feel like you started off on the back foot or is it something that was an advantage for you? So in the beginning, I actually thought like it was an, a negative factor really. Like I wasn't as informed as everybody else because at the end of the day, you're more of like a support function. You know, all the decisions are made, then you're like called in at the end of it when there's so many things you can add to it, right? So as the competition actually went along, I realized that, wow, I actually, I can actually do this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then as that confidence builds, you start, you know, looking at your surroundings and you start understanding where are my threats and what, you know, what are the advantages? And then you notice there's a threat sitting right next to you. <laughs> yeah, and the threat just keeps talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like... Give us a break. <laughs> like, just, you know, and Simon said something really important at the beginning of the competition. Like, you guys need to push yourself. And I mean, as someone who works in traditional marketing, I'm not necessarily in the client facing aspect of it. So I had to, like, build my presentation skills again, you know, actually bring up ideas. And that's not easy because people are very dismissive or they're just like, no, we're not going to think about it. But the beauty of the competition is if you actually work as a teen and and you commit to an idea, there's nothing that can stop you. True, but, but isn't it a reflection of the industry itself is that your voice isn't always heard, you've got to battle to have it heard. I think that's the same, that's true for all of us in most industries, in industries that we work in. What did you learn about, or did you learn anything about yourself in this competition as you went through? Well, I really learned that I'm actually learning to keep calm a bit more because trust me, my eyes speak, but my mouth says a lot more. So <laughs> I, I really learned how to try and keep my cool and also be really accommodating because, you know, my colleagues are so smart. You know, everybody has such amazing things to add. Very true. It did seem like you battled your way through the season, but I want to know if you had some fun along the way as well. I did. <laughs> I really did. I did battle. I mean, it was a mental and physical battle for me, but I had great moments with everyone. I mean, I know a lot about everybody sitting around me. We had some priceless moments. Yeah. And I'm grateful. Yeah, you did. Indeed. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to Tristan. We have to uh, get your perspective on this, good sir. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the fact that you were considered to be quite dismissive? Um, two things. First, <laughs> that sounds like a lawyer as it is. Uh, I don't try and have those faces. I'm going to blame the editing on that one. Um, <laughs> I'm mostly just thinking and... Um, <laughs> Are you saying uh, they, they use deep fakes to make you make those expressions? Um, I... I don't think I am dismissive. I do try and consider points. I think the problem is that I will often consider a point and then think it's not good and move on. Um, but... <laughs> but maybe, maybe back home or in your other environment, you're surrounded by people that allow you to do that, and I'm, yeah, that's not going to go down. No, I, I'm joking. It's, it's, not, it's not that I'm trying to be dismissive. It's we're in a competition. We're being under pressure. We're trying to get through things. We're trying to move things quickly. Um, and that can be difficult to balance. And it's one of the things that I really learned in this competition is how to balance trying to work with your team to come out with the best output, but at the same time realizing that your idea isn't always the best output. Um, and that's a really difficult thing, I think, especially for those of us here who are used to being the top performers in our profession, um, to accept that just because you are a top performer, there are other top performers up there with you, including yeah. Anifa. Very well said, very well said, and I think true across the, the board. And then, of course, you were voted out, and 
what, do you think it was a strategic vote? Do you think it was, uh, again, a, a case of kick a man while he's down? Because a lot of the contestants said, you strong competition. Yeah, I think Tim was said it outright <laughs> that he voted for me just because I was strong, which is, I take as a compliment, to be, yeah. to be honest. It's, you know, there were, there were many ways I figured I could go out in this competition. Um, obviously, this is not where I wanted to go out. I wanted to be sitting down here on the couch. But if I was going to go out at any point, being taken out because I was a threat, not a bad way to go. Yeah, well said. The two of you are sitting next to one another. I don't see you holding hands just yet. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's a hug in the... Oh, look at that. We're okay. <laughs> so, so the bad things that happened in the game stay in the game, right? Yeah, 100%. All right. They've made up, everybody. Well, now, it is... The time has come to focus a bit on the... Last men standing, Temwa, Rain, and of course, Mandy. Before we carry on, I want to congratulate you guys once again for making it this far. <laughs> Massive accomplishment, great achievement making it this far. Uh, it was tough, blood, sweat, and tears, emotional blood, <laughs> a lot of sweat, and many tears, especially from the guys. Uh, but well done, you did it. Uh, it's time to talk to the top three of TIA 2024. Each of them had their own special journey with some good and some not so great days. Uh, and uh, we're going we're gonna to start with, uh, with Temwa. Um, so the first question, and it's, it's an important one, possibly the most, maybe one of the most important of, of you know, the night. And I think a lot of people want to know this is, where do you get your suits? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding, I want to know, because I want to get me some of that. Um, unfortunately, I don't know either. It's all my wife. <laughs> wow. Um, unfortunately, I can't give you her number. <laughs> well, I've already spoken to her, and she's busy making me a nice three-piece. So. No, I haven't, no, I haven't. I thought it was something like that, a little secret stash. Well done. Uh, you look great, you're, you're, uh, and, and it's testament to the way you carried yourself throughout the show as well. You played a very strategic game, very Survivor contestant-like game. <laughs> I liked it because, you were, again, sussing people out and you know, kind of thinking about the future, thinking about how you want things to play out and then trying to orchestrate them that way. Is that the way you, you went about it? Not really. Oh. Um, the strategy only came in the top six. Um, I think at that point, there was a lot of um, break-even in terms of us producing. And I didn't want to go there like a dumb duck and get voted off. So I think it was time to form alliances. And I'm a fan of Survivor, so why not? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good time to start forming alliances, which you, which you did. And then you started taking off the strong players, right? Another strategic move? <laughs> I think it looks like that because I had the deciding vote in the two times we got to vote. Um, and I must say, when we voted Tristan off, it wasn't strategy at all. Um, it was just the only name I could think of at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll never know the answer to that, Will, whether or not that's a true statement. I one cried. thing we do know, yeah? I cried after voting him off. I was just going to say, one thing we do know is you didn't do it easily. When you, when you, when you fouled your opponents on the battlefield, you did shed a tear. Oh, and and is, that, is that testament to just how important relationships are to you? Um, yes. I mean, with that task in particular, you know, it felt like we had all performed re really well. And the analogy is you're stuck on an island, you have to build a life raft and you can only leave one person behind. Who do you leave behind? You know, and it's very emotional knowing that we all performed. I mean, Tristan is a very strong um, competitor, and letting him go that way, it wasn't good for me. I wasn't going to vote for myself like Shivani. You know, I'm not that strong. You only have one of those a season. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was emotional for me in that aspect. You know. Yeah, it read well, and, and we really enjoyed your performance. Thank you. Round of applause, why not, Tema? Next up, we go to Rain. Rain, I got to say, you know, a lot of people have different skills uh, in this competition. One of your secret arts is the art of the poker face. <laughs> yes, that one. That's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> so, 
This man played the straightest game. He kept it clean. There was very little drama, uh, you know, in his game or on his face. Inside, storms are raging. Are you, do you always have a poker face, or was this just your TIA game plan? Should I answer now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's something that I learned from a very young age. You should be able to keep state secrets, not specifically for our state, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that secret's out. <laughs> um, but I think the, the judges put you in a, in a game face mode. And I think when I'm taking things seriously, when it's competition time, then you really have to put on the game face. Now, you mentioned a few like, emotions, like taking things seriously and stuff. So, so we took, we've got a little sequence of uh, pics of your face <laughs> in the most exciting, the most frightening times throughout the season for you. And we, we put them together just so we can, do sh we can show people just the... The range. So this is the pick of you coming into the game Poker Face. This is how I'm going to kick off. The next pick is you very excited because you won one of the tasks. There we go. The next pick, you were perplexed and shocked because you lost a task. It's this following one. There we go. And this is the, this is the kicker. This is the one where you actually made it into the top three. Look at that. I mentioned, I mentioned quiet power earlier on, and I think it's, it's very important. You know, it is a tactic, and it is a war tactic, is, is to, to be quietly present and to know your enemies and to hone your skills and to strike when the time is right. And I think you managed to do it at the right time, at the right place. Uh, is that a strategy that you employ, or is it something you've discovered about yourself? I think it's, it's, it's a constant journey, but... Um Right from the onset, when I entered the TIA competition, I just decided I don't want drama. I don't want to create a name for myself as someone that participates in that. And I think it, it led true with my character. It certainly did. Well done, ladies and gents. Well, this season, the FSCA put up an incredible prize for a grueling task, and the winner of that prize is Rain. What? It's a moment. It's a, did you guys get that on camera? We got that. High speed slow mo. Uh, uh, Rayan has won himself a leadership program and coaching sessions from Lead Me Dot Academy worth 40,000 Rand. Well done, Rayan, on winning that incredible prize. All right, now we move along swiftly. We move to Monday. Don't look there. There's nothing there for you. It's all here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk about your journey, Mandy. We started uh, with Ep2. Um, well, let me ask you this first. Did you, did you enjoy the journey? No, no, I definitely did. Right? It was... No, 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 I did. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, 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 so there's a list of ongoing games, right, um, during the competition. One was the right, was in competition, what? right? The second one was no, 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 something of that sort. So it's been a list of competitions. So... Don't be shocked when you hear me saying those words. But I definitely enjoy the show. I think it was a great experience. Um, and like one of the other guys did say earlier on, it was a lot of, I think, learning and growing, I think, for me. Um, and just being outside of my comfort zone, I suppose. And just learning to navigate the guys and yep. all these big personalities. That makes so much sense to me. And mm. I, it was evident in the way that, that actually one watched your progression. Mm. You might be the most improved. Yeah person yeah. on, on the show, I yeah. think, because yeah. you adjusted your game as you went, right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> In episode two, you read your presentation. Can, can, <laughs> you know, can I explain that, right? Can, can I just explain? Are you sure you want to... <laughs> no, I do. Do you want to read it? Because I know it's in your pocket. <laughs> no, so we were running out of time, right, during the competition, and... Um, Shivani had this great idea of doing cue cards, right? Because we didn't have time to prep, right? So I said, I've never done cue cards before. Um, and I asked um, Rianette, can we do cue cards? She was like, do whatever you want. Oh. <laughs> she said the same thing to me. I said, no, really. <laughs> right? So when we got to the presentation, I was like, I can't read this, right? So I crumbled up those cue cards and I threw them away. And the only place I could look to for cue was the presentation. So... 
But yes, after that, when Simon gave obviously the feedback, I didn't do that again. All right. Yeah. Mm. As I said, you progressed mm. and you looked back and you thought, okay, not, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, going forward, you uh, you were you were kind of a little bit for a moment an outcast. Do you think, mm -hmm. uh, if we if we speak in terms of surviving, in the sense that an alliance was formed, you were excluded? In alliances. Well, look, one, I wasn't aware of alliances, and I think <laughs> I suppose that's where the exclusion is. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> uh, no, but look, I, I, I think for me, even if there was a discussion of alliances, that's not something I would have seen as a benefit. I think, obviously, the judges made the decision at the end of the day. So it was either you performed well, one within the team, or you performed well as far as the task was concerned. So that was my only reliance myself. I didn't necessarily require the alliances to go from one step to the next. Well said. Well said, Annie. He's sitting right here. Yeah. Who was your biggest threat coming into this? Who did you perceive and say, okay, that's someone I have to watch out for? Tristan. <laughs> No, no, no. So me and well, Tristan... You know, you cut off the, heads, the snake's head, you know. That's <laughs> yeah. you... Look, it, it, it was, look, it was definitely Tristan. I think we had had some discussions before, before we got into the top 10, and we got to, I suppose, get to know the sort of people that we are. And I sort of, you know, could gauge the sort of level of intelligence that he has. And outside of personality, which a lot of people have in this competition, I think being, you know, smart and or technically apt was definitely going to get you from round round to the next. And that was the only person I saw as a threat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, testament to how you grew and uh, it worked for you. You're sitting there in that seat. Very well done. And of course, the, winners, the winner of tonight's uh, competition walks away with prizes, and there are many. Let's have a quick look at what the winner will walk away with. This year's winner will receive a prestigious trip to Lloyds of London, a dream holiday with vouchers from Bright Insurance, cash prizes from Tracker and Patent Personnel, and a full 90,000 rand bursary from Milpav for education and career advancement in the insurance sector. They'll also receive access to elite business coaching sessions from Patent Personnel and the FSCA along with numerous prizes from industry leaders like AIG, ICB, and more. Yeah. <laughs> along with the title, oh, you want that, you want that. Uh, so we'll get back to you guys sh uh, shortly, but again, well done for making it this far. And uh, we really, really, it was wonderful watching you guys on screen. And good luck to the three of you. Round of applause again, please, ladies and gents. All right, now, at the start of this competition, we created a poll where viewers could vote for their favorite contestant, even if they were voted out earlier on in the competition. Now, most of the contestants had their own campaigns on the side, and some were clearly better than others. And uh, after tallying up, our winner is... Temwa! Temwa wins a 10,000 Rand cash prize thanks to Bright. Congrats, Temwa. Well done. And then, uh, that's not all. Someone who voted for Temwa is winning 5,000 Rand. 5,000 Rand just because they voted. Imagine that. Five grand for simply voting for your favorite. Well done. And our winner is Johnny Mpombia. <laughs> No, I'm not going to dance, I promise. I won't do that to you. While at times the judges may have come across as quite harsh and even heartless at times, things often look a whole lot different behind the scenes. It's hard to believe that our judges are actually nice people. Very hard, I know. But they really are. If you don't believe me, see for yourself. <laughs> for the first time in the history of this competition, we can only take two people through to this next round. So I'm going to ask you all to write down the names of the two people to go through to the finale.
Wouldn't that be terrible if that's what we were actually doing? <laughs> Does anyone need CPR? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> Oh my word, you see that wrist action? I'm known as Judge Dredd. I have no idea, because I'm actually a, a really pleasant guy. Hey, here's the secret sauce. You're talking right. to me, so I don't You're want right. any of your secret sauce. Y'all better not f up today. Because somebody gonna die. Yeah. You would sit like this. Your presentation stinks. This is so tight. Are these on? I don't oh. think so. Oh. <laughs> Feels like he's attached my ear to my ass. So you wouldn't like it if I was Why did you wrap it like that? <laughs> Is that your fluffer? <laughs> and what do you think of this year's food? Um, I think they're all shit. You look hot right now. <laughs> Stop it. Is that your hanky? <laughs> Just bear with me, guys, while I think of a funny and unique joke about the rain. <laughs> There's a bit of rain happening right here in the studio. <laughs> they didn't contextualize their plan. You see, that's what happens when you say something that's wrong. He's going to sell that on eBay. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll put it here with the rest. <laughs> rain drop. Keep falling on my head. <laughs> All right, so let's get them back in here. Uh, not, not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hear it for your judges, Simon and Knox. Come on up. What can I say? Look at the two of you. What a pair you make. Don't they make a lovely pair? Look at them. Mm. Such wonderful people. Simon, so good to have you here again. And one of the main questions I want to ask you, because I keep, you always say this every season. You say, well, you know, everyone tells me I'm too lenient on them. I'm going to be a little bit harsher this time. And then you up the ante. Did you manage to do that again this season? No, well, I, I don't really need to do that anymore because Knox has taken over as Cruella, so Judge Dredd can actually take a back seat. I, I don't know, man. I think you guys bounced it between the two of you this season, I've got to say. However, we'll get to that in a, in a, in a second. <laughs> I'm not going to let that slide. So um, it, one of the, the other things you wanted to do was to make sure that this competition progresses. And we f I, f I found, that looking at the task, it was the, you upped the ante with that as well, right? What did you feel about it? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we tend to, we, we want to challenge the contestants with tasks that are relevant. Mm. So we obviously meet with the sponsors. Um, and this year was incredible. You know, we dealt with some really tricky topics. Um, you know, looking at, um, uh, you know, providing insurance in informal settlements, which is obviously a big thing that the industry is looking at. I'm looking at transformation and inclusion in businesses. So these are not, you know, issues that they're not going to come across in their own businesses or in their own lives. And yeah, I think the sponsors really came to the party and the tasks were very tough. Indeed they were. Um, but, I, but I also, I just wanted to say, you know, I've had a few comments. It happens every season and people are like, <laughs> you're so mean, you know, <laughs> why do you do this? And, and I do just want to say that, you know, the, we have a very limited amount of time to create a very high pressure situation. Uh, we're trying to manufacture something that might happen organically um, in a business. So yes, we do put them under a lot of pressure. Uh, and yeah, I know that that comes across as being harsh, but no sailor ever learned anything on plain seas, you know, Ooh. so. Keba. Yeah. <laughs> that one's for you. You got some competition right here, my man. But, but, but true words, and, and I mean, that's really what it comes down to, is really putting people into a tough situation to see what their character looks like when that is revealed. And you guys do that so well. It's so important to keep doing that. Any advice for contestants who come in or, or who don't make it into the top ten or, or the ones who come in and then fall out? Either of you. Yeah, I think, 
You know, I mean, there's plenty of people in the room here that didn't win this competition, that have entered, and have gone on to be hugely successful in their careers, and a massive influence and mentors of other people in the industry. Winning the competition is incredible, it's a massive achievement. But what you do with this exposure after tonight is what's really important. And I, and I really, I commend all of the finalists that are sitting here, because in your own way, you've all done something really important for our industry. You've attracted people to it. And uh, yeah, I bow to you. Thank you. All right, Notch, over to you. So the last time we were standing on this very stage, you said it's the last time you're not doing the show again. You said it throughout the season, but you're back again. And can we expect to see you here next season? I'm not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you will. So the question is, what brings you back every time? You know, I don't want it to go out and say just how powerful this experience is. And having you know, the opportunity to be a part of something as life-changing as TIA is, and it's exactly that, it's life-changing, um, is, is, is a fantastic opportunity, and I take so much joy from it. Um, and I, I really want to impress on the audience, the industry, to not take for granted, you know, the support of the sponsors, the engagement from the industry, and the viewers at large, you know, just what this opportunity and this experience does for the contestants. I had a lot of chats with the previous um, contestants in the, in the audience today about what the competition has done for them um, and in my case you know I got the chance because of this exposure to start my own business and that's an opportunity I wouldn't have ordinarily got so I really wanted to impress on everyone that this is life-changing and to not take for granted so we're absolutely grateful for your support and let's keep it going for another 10 years yeah <laughs> upwards and upwards we go well you know we did speak about the uh, the names the nicknames you started out with Cruella I think this season you got a new name. <laughs> Keba, shall we? We keep coming back to you. I think it's, the, was it, well, uh, the mother of all, Dragon. the mother of all dragons, right? Is that, is that the one we're going to go with? That's pretty, you know. But, but you, you, do you carry it with pride? You know, Keba entrenched himself in the hearts of like all the contestants with his brilliantly witty quips. So there's only a matter of time before that extended to me, his favorite judge. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love it. I, I need a new cup next year, Mother of Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Cruella, we have Mother of All Dragons, and then we also have, uh, I think, a new one that we can also give you is she rolls with thunder, because when you speak, it literally happens. Wow. It's called power, man. What can I say? <laughs> Let's hear it for the judges. Don't go away. We had a really awesome bunch this season, right? They were amazing. And, and there was so much emotion and there was a lot of bromance going on. Let's, let's take a look. It's a beautiful video. Take a look. galore interrupting his team always wanting more anifa oh anifa with ideas to boast but clashing with tristan they both hit the coast kiva's metaphors flew like arrows in the air give the samurai their sword his quirky flair Humor fizzled in the judge's sight Disagreements with his team Ending in a flight Jason's the clown Tamworth's got the plan 
rings lifeless expressions like he's made of sand. Temwa plotting like it's Survivor game. Mandy's upset. Alliance is now the game. Oh, the insurance apprentice. Where drama's the game. Where drama's the game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, we'll be crowning this year's winner of the Insurance Apprentice 2024. But before we do that, I would like to call up the creator and perhaps we can say the mastermind behind this incredible competition. She prefers to work in the background, but it's year 10. So I think it's about time we get her up here too. Real Ned Whitehead, ladies and gents. <laughs> Should I ask Temwa for a hanky? <laughs> a one line at least. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. So it's about time you stand on the stage. Um, ten years. That's, you know, how many thousands of hours is that? That means you're an expert now, right? I am. In this. <laughs> Where did it all begin? How did it start? About 11 years ago, I saw a vague concept on a UK newsletter called The Broker Apprentice. It was boring, it was plain, but I saw something. Um, and as our industry works, I started talking with people. Um, we filmed season one. I actually have my guy here who filmed season one. We had three people on a crew, they did it, and with an amazing input from industry, we've, 10 years later, we are here. But it was a tiny idea that I saw, and I just decided there's something magical that can happen here. Yeah, well, you, you, you were the visionary, and, and you saw the, the potential. Did you imagine it would become what it is today? Is that what you hoped for, or did it surpass your <laughs> expectations? I, I don't think that I ever think that this was going to be so big, that we're going to change so many lives. And I'm using the term we, because this is most certainly an industry effort. Yes, I had the idea, I had the concept, but I have an incredible team surrounding me to make this a success. It includes my judges, who's so invested in this. Every single sponsor here. And... And the production crew from Flash Forward that's completely so invested in this whole idea um, and it's going to explode even more. So watch the space. But no, I, I didn't think it was going to go this big. I, I didn't imagine this. But yes, here we are. Well, we've, we've, we spoke about how it started, where we're at now. What do you see for the future? Where do you see this going? Um, our aim is definitely to carry on what we do um, but make it bigger and better. We want to go to television be, be, because we... No, I, let, me, let me rephrase that. We are going to television. Um, we, are, we are already talking about it. it will, um, and, and 10 years was phenomenal, but we, we're also considering a little bit of a format change for the next 10 years, because I think we are fairly predictable now, and as everyone knows, we like to be unpredictable. So I think, um, yeah, expect big things going expect forward. This is just the beginning. Perfect. Awesome. Rianette Wyatt, ladies and gents. Thank you, Rianette. She mentioned them. I'll say it again. Thank you to Flash Forward Productions for not just putting together this incredible live show, but also for the whole season. Thank you, Flash Forward. Well done. And then our main sponsor, Hollard. Without them, this is impossible. In fact, we have a lovely message from them. Take a look. 
community is unique and nobody knows the businesses in your community better than you. From the top builders to the best Gatsby from down the street. But communities aren't just places, they're industries. They're people. They're hobbies that become businesses. They might be ships, hotels, or trucks, and they're all filled with little details that need a special touch. Because I know a Holstein from an Aberdeen. I know an elliptical from an Eggbutt. And we know not all meetings are held in offices. It's why we'll never underestimate the power of a specialist. Who gets down to the nitty gritty? Because it's easy to make sense of a fast-paced world. When you've got someone in your level, someone who speaks your language, they say local is liquor. But local knowledge is like a dirt. It's why we work with brokers who make it their business to know your business. Yep, we are where you are. Yeah, thank you, Harlan. Now, before we do the final announcement, I would also like to call upon the winner of TIA 2023. Ladies and gents, make some noise for Christopher Appenar. No stranger to the stage you are, sir? No, 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 no. no. Quite Not comfortable up here? I mean... <laughs> I've gotten comfortable. Yes, you have. Yeah, so yeah. I remember how nervous you were the last time we did this. And, Super uh, nervous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. People don't realize just how much it takes to get up here and showcase yourself. You know, we've spoken yeah. about it tonight. But it's worth it because you get not only to learn and grow in your industry, but you also get to, if you, if you win, uh, even more wonderful, you get to take that forward. And the yeah. question is, is there an impact that it has? I mean, certainly the show has an impact, but does it continue to have an impact? Oh, yes, Definitely. So, I know most of the audience knows, after the show, we founded the Claims Forum. And we did that with the previous contestants, Marissa, Wayne, Deirdre. And it's flourishing. It's, it's amazing what this platform has done uh, for us as, as past contestants. Yeah, and I think that's, that's what's so amazing is that you, when we said it earlier on, you, it's not just... It's not just a, a game changer, it's a life changer. Oh, and, yes, and, definitely. And, and it's quite incredible to see what you've managed to do with it. And, yeah. and a message, I think, I would imagine to other contestants is grab that opportunity by the horns, right? Yeah, so my message, and I'm going to face them. Oh. Ooh, no, no, don't look, people. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not the winning envelopes. <laughs> so, like, like Simon said, this is not just a competition. Uh, the winner walks away with all the prizes, but it's what you do with the platform after this. Don't squander it. Uh, don't fade away and disappear into the ether. Do something with this. Ooh, wise and weighty words. Thank you, Chris. Well, we did bring you in to essentially come over here and, and really pass the mantle. That's, it, that's actually what you're doing. You'll be continuing, but you're handing over the title to someone else. And uh, ladies and gents, that time has come. Let's do this. Mandy, Temwa, and Rain, please join me, center stage. Chris has the envelopes, I'll take that from you, sir. Now, for the first time, in 10 years, there was only a comma three seven difference in points between first and second place. It's never been this tight, ladies and gents. And on that note, Chris, any final words for them? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why do I have two? Okay. Just checking. All right, we're good. We're good. All right, on that note, the time has come. It's been a grueling journey and you've worked extremely hard to make it to where you've come. Make it to the top three, all possess the knowledge and the skills, but there can be only one winner. In third place, Mandy! And the winner of 
the Insurance Apprentice 2024 Season 10 is... showing some emotion right now well done ladies and gents our winner of season 10 Temwa. would you like to say a few words what are you feeling right now I can't believe it the reason why I'm crying is because I didn't prepare a speech. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, when I entered this competition, I had a vision as well. And I have worked with a lot of people who are not knowledgeable about finance. And I had a passion about giving them education. And I saw this as a platform, the perfect platform to show that we are here in the industry willing to assist everyone. We are in very hard times right now with disasters and a lot of uncertainty. And being the ambassador for the insurance industry means so much to me. And, you know, I am one who knows that I didn't make it here on my own. And I'd just like to give a big thank you to all the sponsors and the creator of this show. I didn't understand the immensity and the, the size of this thing until I actually made it into the top 10. And the value that you guys have brought to past contestants and all of us here is something really valuable. I would like to thank my wife for making me <laughs> look good. I'd like to thank my manager, Lucia. Um, she has been behind my back from day one. And I remember the first week I joined her team, I thought she wanted to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Temwa, you are a gem in the industry and I want to make sure that you grow. And I took that with me and I ran with it. I would also like to just say a big thank you to all the contestants. Any of us could have won it this season. It was such a tough, tough competition. I'm sorry I had to vote out Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, if you look at all of us standing here, all of us can be an insurance apprentice. All of us are insurance apprentices. It's not about the first place i know that getting into the top 10 we all felt like winners from the beginning and i i hope that we still collaborate all 10 of us to make sure that we do place an impact in this industry we have the talent all of us have the talent we were chosen for a reason let's run with it guys let's not just make it about me let's make it about the entire industry everyone needs us let's I, push. I thought you didn't speech. <laughs> Wow! Imagine if he'd prepared! 
There you have it, ladies and gents, the winner of season 10 of The Insurance Apprentice. We've come to the end of another outstanding season and what a journey it's been once again. Thank you to all the contestants that were a part of the season, to our wonderful episode host, Noni Mfungu, the judges, of course, as well as the guest judges for their contribution in crowning this year's winner. And then a very special thank you to all our sponsors. As we know, this competition is just impossible without you wonderful people. And lastly, a huge big thank you to all our guests in the venue and those watching from home. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed the season as much as we enjoyed making it. Be on the lookout. There's more, some catch-up interviews of the top three of each year of the 10 TIA, 10, uh, TIA years, which we'll start sharing soon, right? And that's it. We are done for now until next year. Good night, everybody, and God bless. <laughs>